everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today it's time to get synth wave because we are going to paint some hot pink hair this is going to be a lot of fun let's get into it the, the strict technomancer that is Vincey V. Let us get to the technique and learn it. So, I am painting up Shiv, tiny little box. Uh, this is from Neko Galaxy, specifically the Inu Kingdoms line. Uh, Shiv, she's a really cool bust. It's awesome. I love it. Uh, it's one of my favorite busts of all time. Picked it up recently, and I wanted to do something a little, I don't know, crazy with her. So, she has, she's, I think, meant to be an orc. At least that's what the box art looks like. But I didn't want to go for the more traditional, just kind of black hair. I wanted something that said punk, especially because we're going to use a little blue cast light on this later. And so pink hair, blue light, synth wave, 1980s, all everything I like. Let's get into it. So, you know, I was like, good, good, that's my idea. And so today we're going to cover how we paint pink hair. Uh, but really, this is going to be a lesson about how we paint hair in general, especially when it's in this very unusual shape. I'm going to take you through it. Treat you, or teach you how to basically like uh, build the highlights, build in your colors, everything like that. So let's head over to the desk, let's get painting. So these are the colors I'm going to start with. And for the most part, this is everything I use. Now, you'll notice there's no actual white here or anything like that because we don't need it. Our highest highlight will be this dark worm flesh, which despite its name is actually going to be quite a bright color in this overall color scheme. We're starting with the deep shade. Uh, we're, gonna, we're, we're starting with, with uh, sort of the second from the lowest color is what we're going to base coat in. We use the deeper color to shade it, and then we'll build our way up with highlights. That's going to be our general strategy. As always with hair, we're going to add to the sculpt. And this is true whether you're dealing with something in 32 millimeter or much larger scale, like a bust or anything in between. You have to do more than what the sculpt allows. You don't just paint what's there. You have to add more detail, more lines, more uh, sort of sharp, thin hashes and scratches and things like that to bring forth the texture and the illusion, the feel of hair. So um, that's what we're going to be doing today. But with those colors set up, let's uh, start painting. So here's where she looks like so far. And I just start by getting down a nice uh, base coat of the sort of uh, of the darker color, this sort of dark magenta tone. And uh, really, I'm just wanting to get this completely covered. I will say uh, I'm working over black here because I'm going to be using an unusual lighting scheme. So I didn't like a normal Zenith wouldn't have done anything for me. And uh, I wanted to really take control completely of the light. Um, but it is important to get full opacity on your base coat when you're doing hair. You don't actually want any of like splotchiness or any of that dark primer showing through or anything like that. You don't want any any unusual colors, whether it's zenithal or black or whatever. Get it to one solid color. So I apply two full base coats of this to get it uh, to a solid place. Once it's there, I'm then going to build in some shadows. And the way I'm going to do that is by taking my darker color, this sort of dark plum um, from Pro Acryl, and I am going to uh, just thin this way down. And I'm going to basically not really wash it in, but a little bit. Like I do leave a little bit extra liquid in there. I only wick off a tiny amount and let it kind of run into the recesses. This is gonna be the only time we can really use a technique like this. So it's thin, and I'm putting it wherever there's going to be deep shadows. So on this sculpt, that's going to be places where the hair is tucked in against itself, okay? Or places where there is an, where the hair turns inward. Uh, so if it's perpendicular to the ground and it becomes concave, in that case, then that's going to need a deeper shadow. Um, so on the back of her hair, on the underside of her hair where there's a tuck, and I'm relying on the capillary action here to carry some of this pigment into the recesses because I will want that to be darker. I want the darkest darks to be gathered in the shadows. But I'm not washing everything, and that's really important. One of the things that you're going to have to deal with when you're painting hair is we do not wash the whole thing, nor do we dry brush the whole thing, because not the whole, the whole, all of the hair is not equally highlighted and shadowed. Let me make this really simple right up front. The highlight for the darkest areas, for the shadow areas, will be the mid-tone. So the, the darkest areas will run from mid-tone down to shadow. Whereas the shadow color for the highlight areas will be the mid-tone. So the highlight areas will run from mid-tone to highlight. Think of it like a little moving bar and a spectrum. And you only painting what's in that spectrum in that area. 
So blocking out the general areas of light is going to be really important. We don't move into the really thin hashing until later stages. With all of my shadows in place, it's now time to turn to some highlights. And I actually begin by just taking some of my original color uh, and mixing in a tiny amount of basically the next step up, which is going to be the dark magenta from Pro Crow from Rogue Hobbies. Uh, great color. And so this color right here, uh, what it's going to allow me to do is start just putting on some very uh, thin lines into my shadow areas. And then in the highlight areas, I'm just going to paint the whole thing. So on the top of her head, uh, on these little, you know, on the flyaways and all the things that are sticking up, that's getting a new full base coat of that, including the recesses, including everything. That area's deepest shadow is going to be uh, still a step up from this, but we're going to build it up like that. But as I get to the edges of where I'm base coating, that's when I start drawing out the lines. So you have one area where it's completely opaque and it has covered everything, both recesses and raised areas. And then as you get to the edge of that, that's where you start drawing it out to thin lines. So it's, it's like it fades slowly just on these thin lines, which are going to use to create the strands of hair later. Then I move up to the regular dark magenta. Uh, and just start applying that. These first couple steps, you don't really see a huge amount of change. Both all of this work that I'm doing is with fairly transparent colors. My strategy remains exactly the same. Where my highlights are going to be, I'm going toward full opacity, both in recesses and raised areas, and then I'm drawing it out uh, and fading the edges of it through additional sharp thin lines. Now, I'm doing this through pink hair, but these same lessons are going to apply to any color hair you work on. That's really important. So once that uh, dark magenta, I've got all my lines in place. My next step is going to be to start integrating the dark warm flesh. And I'm going to just build this up through several steps, effectively starting with like a 75-25 magenta dark warm flesh and then 50-50 and then 75 uh, dark warm flesh, 25 magenta, something like that. I mean, this is just all rough estimates. I'm mixing things on the palette. I'm not doing this with, you know, uh, measuring devices. Something like that range is fine. And I begin basically uh, with the same principle with the first one here. I'm still covering the complete area, but once I get one step above this, now I'm going to start only doing sharp thin lines and building them up and building them up and building them up. I work very thin, I work with an extremely sharp brush, and I work lots of little lines. Now, if your sort of goal is to just build hair, especially for like a gaming model or something like this, you could stop after this series of steps, after we get all these sharp thin line highlights on here and we've built all the way up, and really, you're going to be fine. For anything at an army scale, this is probably more than acceptable. Like, you've gone already above and beyond. But if you want to be taking it to display quality, stick with me, because we've got a few more steps to do. My next step is to take some fluorescent pink. And with that fluorescent pink, I'm going to begin glazing the edges, not the absolute highlights, but just the edges of all of my highlight areas, effectively adding back in some really intense saturation. Uh, I want that pink to really be in there, be kicking, be bright, be intense, so we're going to the fluorescent. And these golden high flow fluorescents, I find, are really excellent for this purpose. They're very liquid, they paint in these really sharp thin lines very, very easily, and they've got a heck of a punch. Now, importantly, they won't do much over the darker areas, so I can run a lot of sharp thin lines to bridge down into my shadow areas where they would effectively be maybe slightly brighter than a highlight, but the trick is they will fade and be quite transparent over the darker color paint. Whereas when they're over top of the lighter color paint, the flesh tone that I've used before, they will be very visible. The underlying bright tone, uh, that undershade of those lines, shining through quite bright to make the pink itself extremely vibrant. My next steps are to basically start integrating the dark warm flesh into the... Uh, fluorescent pink and getting a highlight color above that and then working over top of the lines I've done before. This is where we begin what I call the great back and forth. So a lot of work that I do from this point on the miniature is making a lot of smoothing, glazing, and sharp thin lines working back and forth with the tones. This is sadly where we veer off-road. Up to this point I've been able to give you a map 
There are nice clear highways, there's lanes and mile markers and road signs, but now we're hanging a louie right off into a, an, 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 a you know, a, a cornfield, okay? We're off-road here. Because the reality is there is no exact set of steps. And this is a really important thing to understand about display painting. I think oftentimes people want to treat it like, how do I get the exact recipe and series of steps to formulate this thing? That's not how display painting works. There is no such thing. It's just a lot of back and forth and fixing and minor adjustments and noticing a volume slightly out of place and fixing and fixing and fixing and fixing and fixing and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And that's all it is. And that's what I do here. Um, so I'm constantly working up and down the value spectrum, grabbing from all of my different tones so far to both do some thin glazes and some brighter tones. In all cases, though, I'm working in these sharp, thin lines. Sometimes I'll see uh, a recess that's a little too dark in a highlight area, grab a mid-tone, slap it in there, brighten up that recess. Sometimes I'll see a transition between somewhere where the dark warm flesh was and the rest of the pink hair. It won't be quite smooth enough. Grab a mid-tone 50-50 in between them as a sort of thinner type glaze, sharp thin line over the middle there, smooth that transition. And so the work continues, right? Uh, what I end up doing here is shaping out the highlights so that the entire top front uh, or the entire top of the head facing the light is going to be lit, um, as is the little front sort of hair flip or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we have each of the braids on those where they're lit towards the top and then get slightly darker as they tuck into the braid below it. Every time there's a raised or flyaway piece of hair, anything that looks out of place where you can see the strand, I'm not only doing multiple sharp thin lines on it, but I'm also giving some extra highlight attention to those. Those flyaways and little uh, things like that that are sort of uh, out of place or sticking out or, or out or up would be natural areas where the light would catch on that long hair. And we are doing that sort of, uh, it's sort of over perfected. You know, one piece of advice I always give is if you want to uh, really understand how to highlight hair, just Google like Pantene Pro-V hair dye bottle pictures because those are all Photoshop perfect. They have perfect lighting and then they in digitally edit them even further to get the exact perfect halo of light and the light in all the right places. So if you really want to see how this looks, that's always your guide. That's where the light should be. And you have lots of different hair types on those different bottles. So you can see lots of different examples of how the light would reflect. But in this case, you know, anywhere where it's up on her shoulders, sticking up and out, facing upward towards my light source, that's where my highlights are going to ultimately land. And where I'm really, really focusing in, eventually in the very center of those highlights, going to a pure, dark, warm flesh. There we go. That's the pink hair done. Here's how she looks right now. So she's not done yet. Uh, we still got a lot more work to do on her, but I think the hair looks pretty good. Pretty cool, I think. Uh, we're definitely rock and roll. We're pink. We're synth wave. We're everywhere I want to be. If you like this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. If you've got questions about a project you're working on or anything you saw here, drop those down in the comments below. I always answer every question that's asked. If you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways you can do so. There's our merch store down there. There's affiliate links. Uh, you can pick up uh, stuff for your hobby supplies without spending anything extra. In fact, it'll often save you money and you give the channel a little kickback. Uh, there's also, of course, our Patreon focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.